Hi, I'm Adam Pritchard, Assistant Curator of Paleontology for the Virginia Museum of Natural History, and I'm here with a 2021 tale of ancient life. I hope your holidays were good. Mine were, mine were okay, quiet. Uh, I spent most of it at home with my wife, mother-in-law, and two wonderful cats. Opening presents, watching movies, eating food, and uh, Zoom calling with just about every family member and friend we could find around the world. And I'm happy to say I got some nice fossil-themed gifts that I'll share with you now. My very own volume of Marvel Comics' Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, which features a uh, preteen science genius who makes best friends with a giant red Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, that old story. And for my friend and paleontology technician at the museum, Lucy Tredo, I got this. A Jurassic tree? Grow a living fossil? I love this can. Weird little four-toed Tyrannosaurus Rex, all these incredibly colored plants, a volcano in the background, I mean, pterosaur there. I mean, what more could you want? That's a pretty interesting claim, though. Grow a living fossil, a Jurassic tree, in this can? Let's pop it open and find out what's in there. Let's see here. So we have here a plastic tube that contains some, uh, some soil. You can actually see right in there, actually see right in there are some uh, seeds from a conifer tree. And we also have uh, the instruction manual of growing a tree from a seed. So let's take a look at that. Ah, oh, okay. So the seeds inside of our Jurassic tree can come from a tree called Metasequoia glyptostraboides. Claims to be a living fossil. That's, I mean, that's a tree that's still around. It's present in uh, southeastern China and botanical gardens around the world. But it's claimed to be a living fossil. That's worth thinking about some more. Time to do some research. Okay, I already did the research. Yeah. So Metasequoia is a close relative of modern-day redwood tree, with long stems that include various types of needle-like leaves on its branches, um, it's a deciduous tree, so it actually changes color and drops its leaves during, uh, during winter time, different from many evergreen pines. They can grow to incredible heights, over 100 feet tall, so not as giant as the giant redwoods that are present in California, but still a pretty darn big tree. Our story begins in a tumultuous time in history, 1941, during World War II. A plant scientist working in Japan, Miki Shigeru, discovered some interesting fossil leaf specimens from a site in the uh, Miocene or Pliocene of Japan, between 7 and 5 million years old. Dr. Shigeru, in examining these specimens, noted their similarity to the leaves and branches of modern-day sequoia trees, and so he dubbed the fossils Metasequoia. So we have this new fossil tree species from the record of Japan. That's pretty cool, but doesn't get truly incredible until the next phase of the story, for which we cross the Sea of Japan and enter China. During the early 1940s, a plant scientist named Wang Zhan was working in a remote forested area in Hubei province in southeastern China. During the summer of 1943, he had a rough go of it and caught malaria, which is a really nasty parasitic disease that, if you survive, will leave you laid up for quite a while. And Wang Zhan spent this time kind of recuperating at an agricultural school in Hubei province. But while he was there, he heard interesting rumors from some of the people there about an, a bizarre, mysterious tree that had actually had a temple built around it some 50 miles away. Wang Zhan thought this was so interesting, he hiked over 50 miles through mountainous terrain and forests in China to reach this temple and take a look at the mystery tree. And he collected some branches and pine cones and seed samples from the tree, although he wasn't quite sure what to do with them. When he brought the specimens back, they came to the attention of two more scientists, Zheng Wanjun and Hu Xiansu, who puzzled over the mystery of them. And it was Hu Xiansu, despite all of the political divides that existed between Japan and China, who had heard about the discovery of Metasequoia. And in looking at the scientific paper and the illustrations of the Japanese fossils, he was amazed to see that this five million year old tree looked exactly 
like the specimens he had from a living tree in Hubei province. So Metasequoia turned out not to be extinct. It was still very much alive in China. Zhang and Hu wrote the paper that established that the Metasequoia from Hubei province and that from Japan were one and the same, and very, very similar in shape. Botanists and paleontologists from around the world were amazed to discover that this tree existed and that it had seemingly stayed so similar across all this span of time. And they came from around the world to study the Chinese metasequoia specimens. And some botanical gardens obtained seeds from these specimens and grew their own metasequoia because it's an incredibly adaptive and capable tree that can grow in lots of different environments. I mean, heck, I have their seeds in a can from a department store, so uh, it tells you just how uh, prevalent these things can be. The discovery of Metasequoia in China and in the fossil record of Japan triggered a wave of new discoveries across North America and Asia in the fossil record. Paleontologists who study plants, or paleobotanists as they're known, started to recognize the distinctive shape of Metasequoia leaves, cones, and seeds in their fossils from various places all around North America and Asia. 14 million year old leaf specimens in Maryland, 25 million year old leaves from Oregon. Metasequoia is so prevalent in some Oregon fossil sites, it is the state fossil of Oregon. This piece right here contains one of the very distinctive stems with the, the needle-like leaves that would have uh, made up the branches of Metasequoia. This is from the Eocene epoch, about 50 million years or so old from Oregon, so where Metasequoia is the state fossil. 67 million year old specimens of cones from Montana. This one's really cool. This is a complete Metasequoia cone. This one came from Garfield County, Montana, specifically the Hell Creek Formation. So the same fossil deposits that produced Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, and a whole host of amazing dinosaurs also had Metasequoia and as you can see from these pictures, our cone looks pretty much like the ones that still exist on Metasequoia trees today. Yes, Metasequoia was casting shade on Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, and Edmontosaurus. And the oldest specimens of Metasequoia come from 92 million year old rocks in North America and Asia. What's really remarkable about these specimens is their incredible consistency in shape. Once it appears in the fossil record, the fossil species of Metasequoia are almost the same, with some small exceptions to the specimens that we still see living in our botanical gardens in the modern day. This consistency in shape of various structures of the tree across all this time, 90 some million years, is what paleontologists would call morphological stasis. Morphology refers to the shape of an organism, and stasis referring to the sort of consistency in shape, the fact that it's not changing across all of that time. So morphological stasis. When you have an example of that kind of consistency in shape of structures across so much time, tens of millions of years, nearly a hundred million years, that's when people start to pull out the label of the living fossil. And as a paleontologist, I just don't like the term living fossil. Sometimes it's just completely misapplied. I see a lot of documentaries and books that declare that crocodilians and sharks are examples of living fossils. But this isn't one species that's retained the same shape through tens of millions of years. In the case of crocodilians and sharks, these are vast dynasties that contain hundreds of species in the fossil record. And they've changed in lots of different ways, even if they've kept certain characteristics consistent across all of that time. Can't really call that a living fossil. But with Metasequoia, we come a little bit closer to the concept. The fact that the leaves in Cretaceous deposits, the cones in Cretaceous deposits, are just almost exactly the same, identical in proportions, in size, in you know all of their features to the specimens we can see today really shows much more consistency than we see in examples like crocodilians or sharks. So maybe it's okay to call Metasequoia a living fossil. But when I hear living fossil personally, I think of an organism that's not just similar in shape through time, 
but it's like very similar in its habitat, very similar in its geography and its range, and similar in like how it makes a living. Every time you hear a claim of a living fossil, you have to think about what that means. Metasequoia is a great example of morphological stasis. Its leaves, its cones, its seeds did not change dramatically over 90 some million years. It was an organism that was able to survive in incredible conditions with a very consistent shape. However, we don't know about all the structures we can't see in Metasequoia. Maybe the molecules that made up the, the cells of Metasequoia varied through time. Certainly don't know about how the DNA in its cells would have changed through time. And those things can affect all kinds of things regarding temperature, moisture regulation, things we don't see in the fossil record. Plus, it's also very clear that Metasequoia, despite its consistency, occupied all kinds of incredible environments in the past. Its seeds spread across incredible varieties of environments across these different continents and left this amazing fossil record that we see today. Change was happening to Metasequoia all across the 90 million years that it has existed, from surviving in the darkness of the Arctic winters to growing in the foothills of the newly formed Himalayan mountains to surviving in the mountain forests of Hubei province in China. Metasequoia did all of this. So, my point is, whenever you hear about a living fossil, maybe a species that has held on to some similar features across tens or even hundreds of millions of years, but just because they look the same doesn't mean that species hasn't been struggling, shifting across the globe, and fighting through different environments for survival throughout all that time. So I'll let you know if I grow my living fossil, even if I don't want to call it a living fossil. Props to Meta Sequoia for surviving all this long. Cheers. I also don't like that they called it a Jurassic tree. It's kind of like Jurassic Park. It's actually filled with dinosaurs, mostly from the Cretaceous period. Meta Sequoia shows up in the Cretaceous period, so... Everyone just likes the word Jurassic.